Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special stream indeed. This is the Made in Sweden Steam Sale Super Stream. Try to say that five times quickly. Uh, I am Liam O'Neill, producer and protector of the realm at Raw Fury Games. We're, we're known for a few titles like Kingdom, Goner, Kathy Rain, Tormentor X Punisher, Dandara, a bunch of other things we're working on. And I'm joined today by a bunch of cool cats from the Swedish gaming industry. They're going to talk about their games, talk about what it's like to be working at an IKEA desk making video games in cold Sweden, and uh, hopefully answer some questions from you all. So uh, without further ado, Kill Monday, aka the team with the coolest name out there. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Hello, uh, I'm Natalia. Uh... And I'm, I'm the artist and uh, writer, kind of, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and the best looking. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Isaac, I'm the programmer and uh, composer and also writer. Yes. Yes. Cool. Uh, and we did Rambo. Yes. You know, Rambo, if you are talking about that. Very cool. Yeah, we're going to go through all the games. We're going to show you some some videos of each game if you're unfamiliar with them. So we'll get back to Frambo in just a second. Uh, and on your right, and, and I guess my left, is also Fast Travel Games. Andreas, hello. Hello, from Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> What's yes. Up? Um, yeah, my name is Andreas. Uh, I am probably the only guy in our studio who doesn't develop a game. I take care of everything else, so communication with the communities, marketing, PR, events, and stuff like that. And we are we are only games developer. Uh, recently released our debut title called Apex Construct. So pretty cool to talk about some VR specific things about the Swedish games market as well. Very cool. Thanks for joining us, Andreas. And on your right, I always forget right and left when I'm doing this kind of stuff. Is a guy with a shark behind him. Hello, Mark. Yeah, of course. Hello. Hello, Liam. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So, uh, so yeah, my name is Mark. Sorry? What's with the shark? Yeah, it's a good, 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 good question. Uh, cool, cool animals. I uh, hope we can have them a bit more in a, a longer time in our world. Um, but yeah, I'm working Fat Shark. I've been a co founder, CEO. Um, Working a lot latest game, Worm Tattoo, obviously released in like three months ago. Um, happy to be here. Very cool. Thanks for joining us. All right. So, so we're doing a thing called the Made in Sweden Steam Sale. And all of you are here because you have at least one game that's part of this sale. Uh, showing right now on stream just what this page looks like. If you haven't seen this already, you can head over to Steam. It's going to be another 24 hours of Sweden sale on Steam, so make sure that you check it out because we get a bunch of really cool games that have come out of Sweden lately. 
Uh, I think we'll we'll start by talking a little bit about Frambo. So I'm going to go ahead and, and play the trailer from Frambo, and then Natalia and Isaac, you guys can talk a little bit about the game. Does that sound good? Yes. Cool. yes. So we're we're going to go ahead and just play that trailer right now. There we go. That was the trailer for Frambo. A, a very yes. a, a game about happiness and joy. Super family friendly experience. Correct. Not at all very yeah. dark and sinister. <laughs> Fantastic looking. Yeah. Well, Frambo came out in uh, 2015, and yes, it's it is a pretty dark game. Um, kind of uh, based a lot on my own experiences and uh, like the psychological part of it, um, and also. The, the the trip in itself when I moved to Sweden because I'm not Swedish <laughs> from the beginning, so it's kind of it kind of gathers a lot of those experiences and uh, we put together um, this game like in three years of yeah. development. We use also the Kickstarter no, Indiegogo. Indiegogo was it yet? Right. Um, with the help of a thousand people, around a thousand people, we were able to make this game. And yeah, well, the story in itself, it's about Fran, this girl that is about 10 years old. And uh, you follow her story that um, when she, the story begins where she finds her parents dramatically shocked like in pieces in their bedroom and it's kind of that starts as a really huge trauma in, in her you know and then you follow her her journey through the entire process of healing and understanding the situation so it's really dark but at the same time it's really cute and it has a lot of hope <laughs> and uh, yeah it's um and sweden was actually a very huge um inspiration for me uh, because I came to a country that where nature was something so beautiful the forests were so amazing you know and it was it was such an impact for my for, for me and uh, yeah that's kind of the ground of it as a developer <laughs> and yeah. um, but yeah it, it, it is kind of a puzzle game you know like point and click adventure and uh, yeah I hope you play it. <laughs> and Isaac is the composer of the music and the programmer. Yeah, I had to learn how to program to make the game from <laughs> scratch. Yeah. Very cool. What, so, what game engine did you guys use for this? I don't know what else, what else to tell about the game without spoiling it that much. But you saw in the in the trailer that it, it's quite dark some parts. But yeah, just try to keep it quiet. Cute at the same time. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So, so Frambo is a part of the Made in Sweden sale. It's on seventy percent off. So you definitely want to check that out if you dig dark and adorable point-and-click adventures. This is a really cool game. But what engine did you guys use for this? It's the Game Maker Studio. Right. How was that experience for you? Uh, it was actually really good because it was made well to work with two D games. But uh, I had to learn how to work with any game engine from scratch. So it, it was like a year of me just trying to figure out how to code and uh, learning 
a programming language. I had no experience in game making before this. Yeah, Frambo was like uh, the first project that we did, and at the same time we we taught ourselves how to do a game. So it was kind of a very huge journey <laughs> uh, with a lot of up and downs. So and we were a couple, so it was really uh, hard sometimes to work, you know, together and all that. So it was. A huge project, but we're really happy that it came out so well, and yes. we're really thankful about uh, the entire fan base that we have. Also, it's really beautiful. Experience. Absolutely. Just looking at the Steam reviews for this, you guys are at overwhelmingly positive. So a lot of people have played this and, and really, really enjoyed it. So for your first game, that, that seems like a great success, and congratulations for that. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm not going to I'm not going to force you to to spoil any secrets now. But are you still working on? something new for the future will we see more games from kill monday yes of course uh, we love creating games after this experience we also created some smaller games that you can find on our website at killmondaygames.com and um, we just think it's a fabulous way to express stories and uh, you know play with people you know around the world and also we come from a, a movie industry or like a really low budget movie industry. <laughs> but uh, we did a lot of movies and uh, short films and um, uh, animations. So it feels like games were like the, the final step, you know, to really be able to create something that you can be more interactive with other people. It feels really, really fun to, to get that. Yeah. And we're also porting uh, Rambo right now to Unity, so we can uh, release the game on consoles. Yeah. Very cool. That's our main goal right now with Rambo. But yeah, we're, we are making another game right now, and uh, we, it's still like a secret. We haven't uh, released anything about it. But yeah, let's hope that uh, at the end of uh, this year, we can release something. I, we're planning to do it, so let's hope that it works. Yes. Very cool. Fingers crossed then. And uh, if anyone in the chat here, either on Twitch or on Steam, if you have questions for the Kill Monday team, please drop them in the chat and uh, we'll get to that as soon as we can. Uh, also, good point to say that this stream is featured on the Twitch page. And if you're watching there, first of all, thank you for watching. And also thank you to Steam for, for helping us broadcast this out to all the people out there. I uh, very much appreciate it. And also for, for helping us out in arranging the Made in Sweden sale. Uh, it's been really, really cool so far, especially seeing so many games. So again, thank you for everybody participating. It's, it's been really, really good so far. Uh, speaking of teams that have released their first game, Andreas, I believe you guys have a game that you've worked on. Correct. Um, so we released our very first VR title in uh, February for PlayStation VR, and then in March on uh, PC VR on Vive, Oculus, and Windows Mixed Reality. So we are coming quite fresh out of a launch, uh, which has been uh, exciting for the studio. First game ever. Even though we have quite, you know, a veteran team here. Some people who have vast experiences from like Dice, Rovio, and Avalanche, still the very first VR title. Um, I'm super proud of the game, which is Apex Construct. Uh, it's also part of the uh, Made in Sweden sale. So it's basically our try, our take to bring a proper, comprehensive action adventure to VR. Uh, VR gaming has seen a lot of short experiences or demo-like experiences over the last few years. And we set a mission to create something bigger than that, um, a true action adventure. Um, and that came out a couple of months ago. So that's, that's pretty cool. Very cool. So, so we're going to go ahead and play the trailer for that. This is going to be your launch trailer. And we'll come back and uh, I believe we have some, some gameplay footage that you're going to explain to us kind of what's going on. So we'll yes. be right back after that trailer.
Right, that was the trailer for Apex Construct, which looks yes. super cool. It definitely seems like you guys have nailed the action part of that. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and play some some gameplay footage here as well. Yeah, before, before we do that, okay. before we do that um, just a couple of uh, mentions about the setting in Apex Construct, because some of the viewers might have picked up on some of the buildings in the background. Uh, Apex Construct is actually set in a futuristic Stockholm, uh, a shack of Stockholm that has uh, been torn apart by an event called the shift. Uh, so you actually see Katarina Hissen uh, in here in the beginning, for example. Then you can find the Slussen, you can find the subway station as well. So there's a lot of Swedish ingredients in Apex Construct that is you know, fun for if you are living in Stockholm or in Sweden, you recognize a lot of these elements. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Very nice. I thought I recognized the, the subways as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. It was also part. <laughs> So yeah, there's a, a small, a lot of small elements in it uh, that has to do with, with Sweden. Awesome. Um, but then, as you mentioned, we, you know, before we show the gameplay here, we're today is actually uh, our launch day for the first major content update for Apex Construct. Mm -hmm. So what we will see here now is kind of the world premiere of uh, of uh, the first uh, new game mode coming to Apex Construct. And I mentioned that Apex Construct is a single player action adventure. This new game mode that we're about to see is called Signia Cup Challenge. And it adds a leaderboard score chase element to the game as well. So you need to practice your bow and arrow skills, get into the arena and try basically to get as much score as possible. That's what we're gonna see right now. The, the gameplay premiere of, uh, of Signia Cup Challenge. Very cool. Okay, so here it is. World premiere. This has never been aired before. Ever. <laughs> never. Never, ever. So we're, we're gonna... right now without audio, but uh, Andreas, yes. if you want to talk a little bit about what we're seeing here, it looks like we're, we're starting off a round. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. As you start, you see uh, your starting position, basically. You have the leaderboards to your right, and then you have uh, some information above you that tells you what to do, and your local high score to the left. Um, and basically what you need to do is to fire your arrows at the targets popping up. Uh, you can shoot the targets in the very bullseye, which scores 100, and you can be you know, a little less precise and you get 50 or 10 points. Uh, timing is of essence, because the timer counts down, and the more time you have left when a phase ends, the better the score. Uh, you also have a combo meter, which is the red and white pillar you see, the lying pillar there. Um, if you keep hitting targets without the combo meter falling to the bottom, your combo count goes up. Yeah, you had the 22 now, now it's to 1, if you saw that. So keeping the combo meter up is one, one key to actually score points in this game. So new targets will pop up. Uh, each each phase is about a minute long, so you know this is quite a athletic thing to do. If you stand up and fire arrows like this, you will probably fire a couple of hundred arrows. Uh, um, and as you enter now in the second phase, yeah, you still have 30. There are some hidden elements in the courses as well, so. Depending on if you can find them, like secret targets, your chance to get a higher score uh, increases, basically. And again, you know, taking the setting from the main game, this is basically Stockholm Stadium, reimagined in the future after the shift. So if you look at the arena, you see some billboards, etc. Some of the houses here are actually uh, copy pasted, basically, from the real Stockholm Stadium. So, it's set in Stockholm. It's also part of the whole narrative in the game. There is a reason why the arena is here and why you are fighting or shooting arrows at targets. Basically. Is that something players are going to have to experience themselves and discover, or is that something you want to explain? 
Uh, no, I, I will definitely not explain that part. <laughs> Uh, right. Much, much, much of the value by of playing Apex Construct is to find uh, clues as to what happened to the world, why it looks this way, why you are the only human left alive, basically, um, and why there are two AIs who seems to battle for uh, about you, basically. One of them is called Father, who wants to keep you alive, <laughs> and the other is called Mother, who wants to see you dead. And the reason for that is also unknown to begin with. Um, yeah, so you have a global leaderboard for this game uh, mode, the, the Signa Cup Challenge. Uh, it's split on PC, so the PC game mode is live today. The PlayStation VR version of Signa Cup will launch in, well, shortly in June, a little later in June. Uh, but there are leaderboards, uh, so you can choose your scores and beat your best friend scores. Uh, we will also have some contests going forward uh, with some cool prizes for the best archers in the world, basically. Okay, so also I want to mention, what you saw there was actually <clears throat> a switch of arrows. In the game you have your standard arrows, but you also have electrical arrows and explosive arrows. And if you find ways of using them in this score challenge, the Signa Cup, you can actually uh, make additional targets pop up giving you higher chances to, to score even more. And as you see, there are also enemies coming to you, towards you, that you can kill, that they net you scores, uh, but they can also kill you. And if you don't dodge their bullets, if you, if you die, it's over, basically. So you need to keep hitting targets, while at the same time dodging for incoming projectiles and uh, killing off enemies to make sure that you stay alive in this game. So here you can see the score counter. You have the best combo, and combo is really key to get a really great score. Yeah, so Signa Cup uh, is just live, basically. It's free for everyone who owns the main game as well. And it's, you know, VR has a lot of wave shooters and, uh, you know, enemies coming at you. You need to try to survive. We try to do something different here again. We try to really make... Uh, Perfection and precis uh, precision count rather than just being hectic in a way you fire arrows. So you need to aim and get better at shooting a bow within VR. Um, and you know, of course, looking at this on the screen here it doesn't really give you the whole experience of standing in the middle of this arena right. with targets all over around you and, and you know enemies coming at you. And you know, it, it's a totally different and immersive experience once you play this in VR. So this is the last section now of, uh, of Sugna Cup Challenge. As you can see, the tempo increases. There are multiple targets now, multiple enemies, uh, high, high stakes basically to stay alive. Because if you do that and you have kept your combo meter up in quick and precise with your arrows, chances are you will get a personal best to climb the global leaderboards and potentially you know, win a prize uh, when we decide to kind of come to this. So, the whole game mode is accessible from the game menu, so you don't have to go into into the actual main game to play this. However, we urge you to keep playing the main game, and playing Sig Cup also gets you Radiance Points, which is the uh, experience uh, currency in the main game that lets you upgrade your arrows and bow and shield and stuff like that. So even though you might not hit your best score, you'll still get 100 OP Radiance points by playing Signa Cup once. And after you've done so, uh, you can go to the main game, to the upgrade station, and upgrade your gear. Very cool. So this looks like it's a bit of a workout if you want to get all the way to the end. It is, but it's also the kind of game, we believe at least, that you want to play just one more time. Right. So you get more tired <laughs> the more you play. But you want to keep playing to, and you see the leaderboard there as well. You want to keep playing to to beat, of course. So we'll see how this is uh, proceeding. But I think it's uh, it's super cool. We've been playing this for weeks now in the office, trying to beat beat each other's scores. Uh, I I would love to say that I am the best. Uh, but I can't lie on the live stream, so I, I need to go. So what's your highest score right now? What should uh, folks at home try to beat? 
next question. Okay. Uh, I know <laughs> I, I actually have a higher score uh, than uh, what is live right now in the game because we played it in beta mode. I have 260,000 as my best score. So if anyone beats that, let us know on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, 260,000. That's not the best office score, though. I think that's 850,000 or something, wow. which is crazy. It's the main game designer who, who got that score. I think is is cheating. DK, if you hear this, I want to see. <laughs> I want to see this recorded. Cheating confirmed. So basically, if if you beat 800,000, that that substitutes a normal gym routine, and and you're going to be uh, having a good workout. Is that is that appropriate? Yes, you will be exhausted and probably lose a couple of pounds. Cool. Well. <laughs> right. Oh, I. Try it out. If you have the game, go try it out now on PC. If you don't have the game, there's a demo live on PlayStation. Free demo you can download. And it's also on sale on PC in the Made in Sweden sale. So there are, you know, all kinds of reasons to get the game. Absolutely. Apex Constructs, 33% off. Brand new game mode today. That's really, really good. Yes. Yeah, I have one more exciting thing to tell you also. Just a very short notice about Apex. That tomorrow... We are releasing it on PlayStation uh, on a disc, which is, you know, I know this is a Steam, Steam sale and Steam initiative, but it's quite interesting for us at least to bring a game on a disc in 2018, you know, being our own, our own developer and our own publisher, basically. So exciting times now for Apex Construct. Definitely. Congratulations on that release. Hope it goes super Thank well. You. Yeah, thanks. And if you have any questions, just fire away in the chat and I'll answer them about VR or about the game or us as a studio. Absolutely. Drop, drop your questions in. We're going to be going back and talking about all these games a little bit. But now, the man to the... To the I think it's right. I hope this is still right. Martin, you, you've been quiet and now it's your time. So, what is Fatshark and what is Vermintide 2? That's a good question. Fatshark is a game developer in Stockholm. We have been around for 11 years now with the name Fast Shark. Actually, we started a bit earlier with like subcontracting for different companies. We worked with uh, Sega on Hell of the Redemption and we worked on uh, with, with uh, some other companies as well early on. Um, our latest game is Vermite 2. It's Warhammer Vermite 2. It's based on the uh, Games Workshop IP um, that we have loved. I mean, we, we have a lot of people here has been really playing the game since a long time ago. I mean, I had three armies. I probably played for like 25 years, something like that. And to have to be honest, I don't play that much anymore. I, I started again. Takes a lot of time to collect the miniatures and so forth. But um, Vermintide is a co-op game, four-player co-op, first person. Um, this is a sequel. The first one was released in 2015. Um, and this is, uh, what do we say? It's, if you play the first, the second one is much more RPG elements, talent trees, much career, much more enemies. Um, in the first game, the main adversary is the Skaven, the Ratman. In the second one, we had another faction that's called, that's called the Chaos Ones. It's sort of like big knights with uh, evil ones. Um, they're the voters of Nurgle, the, the, the pestilence god. Or, yeah. So, um, it's a very it's a tough game. If you play on the highest difficulty rating, it's super hard, um, and it's even pretty hard on the easier ones as well. But um, some, if you want to play it as an adventure, just go and look into dive into the warmer world. That's something you can do as well on the easier levels. But um, we remove these in the second game because it, we realize the game is never easy. So um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So yeah, right now we release a, sh a new update, a free update, where we have, I don't know, exactly like 140 new challenges to do different stuff, like uh, create stuff in the levels and show how good you are at completing levels, uh, dodging enemies, uh, killing enemies in, in different time trials and stuff like that. Uh, you need to do certain, complete certain events to earn a lot of like different cosmetics or some really cool loot, um, which is awesome. So um, I've been playing a lot last five or six days. We tried to get some new portrait frames for my characters and because we we at Fetcher, we never like we never give us the stuff. We need to earn it internally. So we played as well. We had a couple of guys, you know, Tom with the big beard. He realized he's the guy. He, he had to get his portrait frame before uh, yeah early today. So he was kind of stressed out to get in the last sort of, sort of wins. I love that that the team is is stressed out about winning first. 
seems like yeah. there's a bit of a trend of here about competing in the office. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So, so we're going to go ahead and, and play the launch trailer for Vermintide 2. This is uh, quite an epic trailer. And uh, after that, we'll come back and we'll talk some more about Vermintide, about Frambo, and about Apex Construct. So don't go anywhere. We also have a little special thing coming up after this. So don't go anywhere. And we'll be right back with Vermintide. That was the trailer for Vermintide 2. Pretty damn epic stuff, Mark. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm really proud of that. We did it internally with the in-game assets as well, which is kind of uh, a cool thing. I didn't know we could. It like it's, it's really, I, I it's, it's really awesome. Yes, BQ did the music as well. It's the one he helped us out with. Uh, he's done the music for the, both of the games as well. Uh, super talented composer. Um, so yeah, we, 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 I'm really happy with that trailer. Um, it's all in-game stuff. We have some, I think, has some maybe some post effects regarding some smoke and stuff like that. But it's, apart from that, it's it's in-game stuff. So you can play this in, uh, but it goes a bit faster in-game though. You don't have the opportunity <laughs> to stop the game. It's sort of much a very quick one. So yeah, um, there's no easy mode. Just, no, there's no easy mode. This is too broad. <laughs> it's uh, two. Factions, uh, as, uh, as I talked about, the scale is the Ratman, as you've seen, and the Chaos Ones is the one with the big horns and like helmet and looks pretty like, I shouldn't say zombie like, but it's like, you know. Um, you play together, it's super important to cooperate. It's uh, a game where if you don't cooperate, you fail even on the easiest level. You have to cooperate at all time. Uh, you need to, and the difference between the first and the second one is the second one is more geared, you need to customize your sort of career. So you have to pick the right talents, you have to pick the right weapons. Uh, we had a run yesterday on Legend where we ended up we not being able to kill a troll because we didn't have enough firepower or weapons. We were more like tanky guys, all of us. So um, it's, 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 it's as another dimension that you need to kind of optimize your team and how you play. Um, if you get separated, you usually end up dead. Uh, <laughs> And I and also I'm really proud of the last like update we did a couple of days ago. It's uh, it's adds a new flavor, adds something to strive for, it's, and a ton of like new cosmetics as well that you can so you can customize your character uh, visually as well. Um, what more to say? It's a great game. I mean, it's really fun to play, uh, and it's 25 percent off Steam right now. So if you haven't tried it, at least go have a look. Uh, it's tough. Yeah. All right. So, so there is, there is one thing we need to do during the stream, and that is to show a, a very special music video that was made specifically for the Made in Sweden Steam sale that we have going on. Every time I try to say Made in Sweden Steam sale, I get nervous. It's not going to actually work, but it's fine. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. <laughs> so, we're, so we're going to go ahead and uh, and first of all, we're going to play a little a message from the composer of of the song that was made. I'm going to show you the music video. But before we do that, there was one quick question I wanted to get to, and that's from Hey There Rosie Rowe, who asks to Andreas, how was it to market a VR game? Has it been tricky to get VR to the mainstream audience? Yeah, that's a, that, that's a key question, I think, that everyone involved in marketing asks you know, themselves today. Mm. How do you bring a game that doesn't really come to life until you put a VR headset on, how do you bring that game and, and convince people that this is an awesome game to get? Um, part of it is, you know, directing marketing to people who own a headset today. They understand, you know, the, the kind of experience that, that they can expect from a game since they're used to playing VR. Um, but for the mainstream audience, it's it's super tricky, I would say. Re reaching the hardcore VR gamers is one thing. They're quite vocal on communities, and they have there's a, there's a bunch of you know, big VR influencers out there, content creators as well, that we decided to work with to to get the the best going among the hardcore community. But the the mainstream VR audience, it, it is tricky. Um, it's uh, I, I think it's an answer that will you know resolve itself over the next few years as VR itself becomes more mainstream. Because right now, you know, there are only a couple of million headsets sold, and we decided to make the VR game strictly for the high-end headsets. So we we're not focusing on mobile VR at the moment. Um, you know, our game requires the hand movements, the hand controllers, and stuff. So yeah, it's it's really tricky, and especially from a small studio like us, we don't have a massive budget, so we have to think really smart and clever. And um, I think we did some great things to work around that. But but it is a definite huge a huge uh, issue or a, or you know an obstacle to reach the mainstream VR audience today. Very cool. I'm seeing another comment in the chat was from uh, Object Class Cater who says hello to Natalia and Isaac. Or Isaac. <laughs> you guys have had to be silent for a while now. I'm going to ask you a question. 
would you ever consider doing a game like Frambo in VR? Actually, it has been. Uh, is it for us? Yes. It's for us. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was actually as um, you know the whole concept of VR that you have to go through the world more more into it. It was like the first uh, thought I got if we were able to make like a first person person video game. Yes. It will be like in VR. It feels like so natural to just wander yeah. around, you know, and and all this about uh, finding stuff and uh, secret stuff will be like so fun to do like in VR. The exploring yeah. aspect of VR is really fascinating. Really? Definitely. So yeah, of course, many yeah. ideas happen here. <laughs> all the time. It's just the money, you know, <laughs> that you exactly. have to wait for to get. Always the money. Yeah. <laughs> And there was someone earlier who was commenting on that there was a very cool statue behind you of Fran. Yes, she's my daughter. <laughs> yes, we have digital, digital children. <laughs> yes, I, I saw the draw and the dress and everything. Um, I, I just think it's so fun to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> it scares the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Someone's holding something into the. Is that a Darth Vader with a Sweden hat? It, it sure is. So there you go. You probably didn't know that Darth Vader was Swedish. Darth Vader. But apparently he is. And that's now been confirmed on the internet, which means it's true. Martin, you guys also did some VR stuff in the past. Do you want to talk about your experience with VR? Yeah, we built a VR. Um... Uh, so the game mode for Vermintide, the first game, uh, was, is free on Steam to, to try out. It's, it's still free, so you can just go and try it. And it's more like, you know, playing around in the Vermin world and, and it was something we tried out. We really felt like we were a lot, actually started like, um, we used, we have these hack weeks where we hack, sort of like, we let the employees do whatever they want for one week, every quarter. Um, and they... That's something that should benefit the company in some way. So a lot of people do different things. Um, and there were a team that wanted to try do some Vermintide stuff in VR. And that's how it started. And then I, I spoke with, um, we collaborated with uh, Intel on that one. So it had a good, some, some good time in doing stuff. It was really fun. Um, obviously, like, I mean, it's, it's um, yeah, it, it, it was a great experience. Uh, I was super scared at times when I when I tried it. So yeah, it's it's, it's a great fun. So I mean, try it if you it's free. So if you get if you own the first game, one the one that's sort of the five percent off right now, I think um, you get some extra bonus levels and stuff. So awesome! I don't miss that. Is VR something you'd ever come back to? Uh, yeah, as, I mean. We have grown our studio quite a bit, so when we when we when I think like it's all about finding the right game for doing it. It's, it's uh, right now we are in a really good spot in terms of like consoles and PCs, so we're going to continue doing that. Yeah, that's the same for mobile and other type of devices and stuff. It's when we feel we have a good concept, we're going to do it. It's not something we like, you know. When we do a game, we look at like uh, we look at what kind of platforms and what kind of monetization models. We don't say like, hey, let's do a for this and that, it's more like, you know, we explore stuff and if it feels right, we do it in different formats and different payment methods, whatever it could be. Right now, like premium games for console and PCs where we're at, but I guess when the, as the market grows, I can get more and more people will move into VR space. I, I guess so, yeah. All right. That's, I think it's a matter of when, to be honest. But. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people have been saying that lately, that it's not a question of whether VR is going to take off or not, because it, you know, it's already built a lot of momentum, but it's a question of when is it going to reach mainstream. Uh, what do you yeah. think, Andreas? Uh, I think it's slowly getting there. I mean, PlayStation VR has done a lot for the console audience. Uh, we have seen you know, price dropping quite significantly over the last year on both PC and console VR. We see the technology becoming better. So, we, you know, Oculus Go, even though it's not a high-end gaming headset, is completely wireless and doesn't even require a PC to enjoy VR. You can bring it with you anywhere. So I think, you know, we're slowly getting to a point where VR is more affordable, better, better technology, more wireless. And what we can do 
I think, is just to keep making great content for VR because that's also, you know, what's been missing a bit over the last few years. You know, the, the killer must have games, for example, in VR. So our our strategy is to go in early now in VR and keep doing VR exclusive games so that whenever the VR audience is massive and potentially mainstream, we know VR, we can make probably, you know, kind of the best games in the world, perhaps, in VR. We would be experts when time hits, basically. So, as you said, it's moving in that direction, uh, both from a technological standpoint, from a partnership standpoint, consumer standpoint. So, it's just an exciting time for VR at this point, I think. Very cool. So you're going to be ahead of the curve, and uh, you're going to know all the secrets. That's good stuff. That is, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to go ahead and play now a, a little video from a guy called Petra Vita, who has made a very specific song for the Made in Sweden Steam sale. Check this out, and we're going to play the music video afterwards. Uh, if you're sensitive to catchy music, beware, because this will get stuck in your head. Here we go. Hello, my name is Petra Vida, and I am a poet, singer, songwriter, rapper, Twitch streamer, and most importantly today, um, the primary composer for what you're about to hear in a second. This song that you'll hear uh, started out as a kind of amorphous and free-flowing collaboration with Raw Fury that I was, I was thrilled to be approached about, um, and we kind of narrowed it down closer and closer and closer to the format you're about to see. Uh, it started out as kind of a drinking song uh, with nothing else going on in the background, a cappella, and added in some, some instruments and some production, and then started shaping that kind of pub, raucous drinking song environment as well, um, with some, some bashing on the table right here in the studio where I'm recording this from, some foot stomping, some hand clapping, some finger snapping, uh, etc. to make that happen. And uh, the end result is, is what you're about to hear. I had a list of a lot of the, the games and companies involved in, this, uh, in the, the sale that the song is going along with. And so I was able to, to work those into the lyrics and really try and kind of capture the spirit of kind of this funny but respectful uh, stereotypes. Of, uh, of living here in Sweden and maybe of, of the Swedish people that might go along with some of the games and, and creations that are, that are coming out of here. Um, so without further ado, I hope you enjoyed the song and uh, I hope you are able to pick up some rad games from some of these fantastic um, Swedish developers and publishers. Have a good one. I bet you heard that winter's cold but is your summer too? It may be June in Sweden, but our sky is rarely blue. So when the clouds, they overpower, then what is there to do? We sit at our Ikea desks and game the whole night through. Hi! Feel like I'm sitting on a mirror's edge Until I'm a goat munching leaves from a hedge I take shelter to be safe from the cold Or I steam world dig myself down into the coals This is a Swedish sale of our games And we offer them to you on a national day May your moose be blessed and your skies be grey So you can play these games in the Swedish way We like to write pop music in our bubbles While we're cruising around our meatballs and berries And sauces that you're not using But that's okay, we're really friendly and amusing At least once we stuck a shot of absolute boozing so boot up your computer and tell us of what you play and if you're nice we'll tell you what ikea directions say all right admittedly we're not sure ourselves but people love the furniture you know the stuff sells we've got abba and fika and spotify and h and m but what you don't know we got game devs for each of them indie games we're teaching them triple a we're reaping them but when your whole day is night dark don't mean you're sleeping then we the smelly fish and crack your steam wallet put snooze in your lip but be sure you don't swallow it press the power button your pc is is calling you, link around here somewhere, be sure you follow it. Feel like a donor when I lose my head, just cause two weeks on this game I spent. But I stick it to the man work, pay my rent, then I'll settle back in for my Titan quest. This is a Swedish sale of our games, and we offer them to you on our national day. May your moose be blessed and your skies be gray, so you can play these games in the Swedish way.
And there we go. That was the music video for the Made in Sweden Steam sale. <coughs> and uh, Mr. Brandon, the, the creator of this uh, this song, is in the chat on Twitch. So if you have any questions for him about how he writes so damn catchy stuff, and uh, if you're angry that it's now stuck in your head, you can tell him about it live. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, we had another question in the chat earlier that I wanted to get to, and now I need to find it again. Uh, but maybe one interesting thing would be as well to talk about some of the other games that are on the Made in Sweden sale. So. To, to anybody really in the chat right now, who or which game is, is your personal favorite of the ones that are on sale right now? Uh, can I begin? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I would like to recommend um, Dream Machine, which oh, I don't remember the makers of it, but I really enjoyed that game because it's all like in um, stop motion animation, which is personally one of my favorite animation styles. So it was really beautiful to go through it, and the story is pretty, pretty nice too. So, and it's divided in chapters. So, yeah, I recommend that. The Dream Machine. Cool. From, from, from what was it? Remember? Oh. Sorry, I don't remember the name of the developer. That's That's right. like, but the game, yeah, the Dream Machine, the, the Dream Machine, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, uh, I'd like to recommend everyone who who you know who's not afraid afraid of the dark to uh get soma and amnesia collection from uh, frictional games down in south i mean it's amnesia is probably still the scariest game i've ever played and soma is probably the game with the thickest atmosphere i think that i've played i i very much enjoy first person adventures and um Amnesia and Soma from Fictional are just masterpieces. Uh, one is a horror game, you know, through, through and through. Uh, but Soma is more uh, philosophical and, and moody and eerie. Uh, but both are great. And they're, you know, all, both these games and the Amnesia Collection is currently part of the Made in Sweden uh, sale. So I would definitely get those. Very cool. Martin, any recommendations from you? It's a tough one. It's a, it's a lot of good games. Uh, Don't say Vermintide 2, because that's cheating. Yeah, I know, I know. I saw say Vermintide 2, you know. But, um, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun playing Just Cause 2, but that's a big one. I would, I would rather have to say a, a more indie game, but yeah, I would, uh, if I say something right now, I would say Just Cause 2. That's, that's one I played it quite a lot as well. It's a fun just playing around. It was super cheap as well right now. Um, but there's, there's so many good games here, so... It's really, I, I just say, go and browse and buy a couple of them because they're, they're super cheap as well, a lot of them, so, um, yeah. Cool. We have a comment in the in the chat here as well, which I completely agree with. It's Virtual Revolution says, the Frambo game is on my playlist right now, and grats, I love the art style. Do, do you guys maybe want to talk a bit about the making the art for Frambo? Like, it, were there any special inspirations from this? Um... Well, yeah, I mean, uh, there's like a lot of bits. Um, well, uh, it comes a little bit from uh, very old paintings like Rembrandt to like Tim Burton. And, uh, you know, like the 90s came a lot of heavy films on the TV from Tim Burton, like uh, um, Beetlejuice and all that. So I was like really amazed by that part. So, yeah, it's kind of a mix of what I've been through, you know, through the years. So, but thank you very much for saying that you like my art. <laughs> it's really nice. Ooh, another question from Object Class Keeper. This is for Martin, I believe, who asks, did Games Workshop participate a lot in the development process? Yeah, uh, I mean, not in the actual development, but we sort of like, you know, synchronized lore art work and that kind of stuff with Games Workshop. Uh, after their IP, they, but it was fairly smooth process, I would say. So it's been good. We had, haven't encountered any issues. It's like you know, when we're done, we send them stuff, and they say, okay, it looks good. But I mean, then we are really a lot of us have kind of warm nerves, you know. So it's been, <laughs> I think we were very like thorough with everything we did here. Um, but yeah, it's been a smooth process for sure. But they, yeah, they need, they need, they need 
to approve stuff, obviously. So we don't go change their law, so to speak. Sure. No, we do change the law actually, but we change it. We use we affect the law in a good way that they think is a nice one. So to speak. Great power comes great IP changing. Exactly. <laughs> we 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 are we're flying back and forth. We go there sometimes and talk to them, and they come and with us and you know talk about the game and where we're at, and what we can do with the errors and stuff. Great. So another question here for for Kill Monday. This is um, from Virtual Revolution, I believe. Yes. Uh, let me see here. It says, I love the fact that you are both partners and that this is a, that this has a very personal story behind it. What was the hardest part of the whole development for you? I want to answer that. <laughs> and what is the name of the cat that currently wants to answer the question as well? Hello, it's my inspiration for Mr. Midna in the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's always coming. <laughs> Every time we're at the computer. I think the hardest part was when we were making Flambo. We had Baloo coming over, <laughs> tipping over the coffee and uh, walking over the keyboards. Come on, be, be, be serious now. That yeah. was not at all the hardest part. <laughs> I think the hardest part was to actually motivate yourself to get the game done and uh, get up every morning, work. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and we were like really budget, so it was like really, really intensive times, you know, like. We need to do this this time, otherwise, it, uh, we ended up with 2,000 crowns to release, and we had zero to that. So it was like just on point to yeah. finish. So it was 2,000 crowns is $200? No, yeah. that's more or less. We had our backup plan was to move back to our moms and start working on something else. Yes. So it was really tight with the money and time and, and the knowledge. We were just like super stressed out, but it was like super fun in the overall. You know, you learn a lot, and it's it's just amazing how how things got at the end. You know, like this, uh, motivation that we gave each other. Yeah. We fight it a lot too. And all that. <laughs> we also learn how to be in a relationship and also be in a business together. So we have to switch roles. Yes. Like, okay, this Saturday we're a couple. Every other day, I'm a programmer and yeah. you're a director. Yeah. So it was really like, uh, we were really, really hard with the, the role playing kind of. Yeah, still are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was like a roller coaster. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, there's a, another question from Rea15 who asks What do all Swedish games companies have in common? Andreas, do you have any thoughts on this? Fika, I guess. Fika. <laughs> um, do you want to explain Fika for the non Swedes in the chat? What, what is Fika? Fika is the mandatory time uh, each weekday that you take with your uh, partners in the office and sit down and have a coffee and a biscuit and uh, chat about things that has nothing to do with games development, I think. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. We try to, you know, talk about other games and stuff and have, have a quiet moment with our, you know, black or milk-filled coffee and and a, and a bun. It's a very it's a very Swedish thing to do, and it's something you have to do. I think. Fika is when, mandatory in Sweden. Interesting. What about you others? What what's what do all Swedish games company has have in common? Hmm. We kind of uh, have the time to to see it when it's really cold, I think, like <laughs> you want to do that instead of being outside or, you know, it's like white and uh, like a white desert. Yeah. You always need a reason to get a cinnamon bun. <laughs> Everywhere. One, th one thing that I think is actually a, a general thing for Swedish devs is the way to keep pushing boundaries on art and technology uh, innovation when it comes to, you know, how to oh. games, for example, or how to experience games. I, I, I've been around a few different companies, like Dice, uh, um, this as well, and it's or, or Activision Blizzard in Sweden. But it's it's always a sense that keep pushing things forward. We try to do new things. Try to be best in class, basically. Even though you know, always best in class, we at least have that mentality to bring something unique to the market that no one else can do. Interesting. 
It's, it's a tough question. I don't think it's like, uh, there's so many different, I think that one of the greatest things with Sweden is that the variety of games is so, it's like on all platforms, it's on all like type, it's from like one person in this to like really big companies like DICE. Um, so, and there's mobile uh, giants like King and there's, uh, VR companies like Fast Travel and, and other uh, VR companies here in Stockholm, and there's like the Mojangs. There are uh, there's there's a lot of games. There's also the the mid tier games. There's there's games in all aspects. That's kind of really big, and then quite a lot of big, really big ones companies as well. If you're looking at the top selling companies on Steam, like top selling games on Steam, there's a lot of Swedish games there. Mm. Um, not only not right now, but on average, um, I think one one thing that might be might be important is that we have a quite a good social um, security in Sweden, so people take the risk and start companies and doing games. Um, I think that's one one key thing um, it, in comparison to many other companies. Uh, I also think that the kind of the darkness that people stay indoor and like you know, if this would have been Spain and Italy, I probably would have started factual ones back in the days. So I've probably been out in the sun more. Uh, so yeah, I, I think yeah. And also quality, of course. Um, and I also think like some of the, there actually some of the some companies went into the demise a couple of years, like 10, 15 years ago. They helped a lot because like when when those went into bankruptcy, a lot of new companies were like forced because there were no jobs in the industry, so everybody needed to go out and like start their own company if they wanted to work with games. And a lot of companies has started from that. So yeah, uh, and it's also been like. When I was studying, like when I was quitting business school and uh, the Royal Institute of Technology, I um, nobody wanted to start their own company. But today, like it's it's really this changed completely. A lot of people want to start a new company. Um, mm. I think that's it's, it's on the on the, on the grand scale. But apart from that, I think the diversity is, is one of the greatest things with Sweden. That there are so many different type of companies and different type of games and different type of. Uh, sizes and budgets, you know, it's in, there's it's everywhere. And we have such an IT infrastructure as well that you know enables yeah. these new companies to actually start up quite quickly and find yeah. tools and ways to communicate. IT in, in Sweden is amazing. Uh, yeah. Basically, anywhere you go, you have you know proper high-end IT. Uh, so that that's really helpful for new companies and established companies as well, uh, like this. That's very true. Yeah, we, we're quite lucky in, in just like having good internet connection almost everywhere. I was on a, a team call just earlier with a, a colleague who's driving through Beverly Hills and his connection just died. And you find that kind of ironic that like this rich people area in the United States doesn't have the, the internet that we almost take for granted in Sweden. I don't know if that's true everywhere or if it's mainly Stockholm, but, but yeah. <laughs> Interesting one. So what was the moment for you all when you realized that you wanted to start your own place? Because I guess Everybody in this call has actually started their own company at some point, myself not included. I can start. I was at a job interview at McKinsey and I realized I, I didn't I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do games. So can I, I moved into, instead of going management consulting, I, I jumped into seller and started coding. Um, so that was the moment for me and Rickard, uh, one of my co-founders. Uh, I'm just, kind of I'm just envisioning you walking out in the middle of the in, the interview and just be like, ah, screw it, I'm going to make games instead. No, 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 no. It was more of like a selective dinner with like five or six students uh, and a couple of management consultants that we talked to. But uh, and we didn't walk out. We uh, ate up and drank up. You were students, you know, free food, free free, free drinks. Uh, so, but yeah, but it's... Uh, but it was a movement we felt like, oh, is this the thing we want to do for the rest of our life? No, we want to do games. Okay, let's do it. Mm. I'm happy I didn't realize how long it took to build a studio and how long it took to build a game it's because it's like, you know, so many ups and downs, but it's like, I think patience is one of the most important things uh, in this industry because everybody will have their ups and downs and everybody will doubt their games and their like, doubt yourselves and stuff like that. But at some point, like, uh, eventually you, you, you get the break uh, if you persist enough, hopefully. And I... I did it actually, I wasn't part of starting Fast Travel Games, but I can tell you the reason I joined the VR industry. <coughs> Just basically the same reason that the founders of Fast Travel would give you if they were here. Um, I'm a huge romantic when it comes to experiencing things in game. And the first time I tried VR was 12 years ago at a convention in Copenhagen. 
and I was blown away. Most people actually are quite blown away when they play VR for the first time. And I felt there and then that I want to work with VR at some point. Uh, it took some time. But when I saw the vision behind fast travel to actually deliver all VR games for a long, long time and to make the most immersive games, uh, I was sold on that vision basically. And I felt I had to join uh, this kind of industry. Uh, to see how far we can take this over the next five, ten years. I mean, where, where VR is going, you know, we have a lot of predictions, but it's also spreading across uh, a lot. So it's a super interesting journey to be part of right now. Um, but first and foremost, it's just about the romantic feeling of being in a different world, of doing different things that you couldn't do on a first screen game, for example, or you couldn't do. You can't travel to the moon. You know, in real life, well, you can, but it costs a lot of money. But you can absolutely do that in VR. Uh, quite easily. That's actually what fast travel games, the name came from, uh, a way to fast travel to new worlds. Uh, put on the headset and you're there, basically. Very cool. So, yeah. Where does the, the name Kill Monday come from? The name Kill Monday? That's, yeah, I agree uh, with it, don't get me wrong. Yes, we... We were like having this story in our heads that we wanted to create a game on. So we started to play with it on weekends. And we then developed we, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, day jobs that we didn't really enjoy that much. It was just to get some money. So uh, every time Sunday was coming to an end and Monday was coming back, and we were like, no, damn it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, when we started the company, we were like, we have to call it Kill Monday. So we always remember like the roots where we come from. Yes. That it's the like the dream, the passion that keeps us making things. And, and it's so fun to make games. It's just yeah. too fun. <laughs> and actually we were and Natalia was out of a job and she was talking about getting a job as an animator in, uh, in the games industry. Yes. And then we saw the documentary in the game, the movie. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that inspired the, my yeah. life. And we saw these normal people as working from home, being able to make the, the game of their dreams and releasing it by themselves. And uh, that was a huge inspiration. And yes. That's why we got the courage to try it out ourselves. Yeah. See how it goes. And, you know, another Thing was that we wanted to tell stories that uh, we really couldn't afford with the movie industry or the animation industry. And somehow making everything in our computers, I could draw everything and animate there, everything. I, I just needed a few um, programs to do it. And it feels like a lot easier to, to, to put everything together. But yes, like uh, someone said before, patience is like king here because it takes so much time. It's so many steps you have to follow that in the middle, sometimes you just kind of don't want to keep doing this. <laughs> it's like a torture sometimes. But then it comes to life again and you get this um, extreme passion for what you're doing. And it's fun when you come there. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Slowly. Martin, if you want to turn down your volume just a bit, I think there's a bit of an echo on your end. I'm not. I think it's your end. I'm not sure. I I muted everything, so. Okay. Cool. Yeah, me too. All right. Magical echo. <laughs> so, okay. So what kind of volume should I turn down? If uh, if this is your speaker volume, I think, it might help. Here's, so, so what's like? You mentioned some really good advice for people who want to start their own teams. What would you, I guess, suggest for someone who's who's looking to break into the games industry and maybe not looking to start their own company, but, but wants to start working somewhere else. What, what kind of in, like advice would you give such a person? If you want to start working somewhere else or? Yeah, I guess if you want to start your own place or work somewhere else, it'd be interesting. I think like portfolios is good, like building stuff, trying stuff, doing stuff, show your passion about it. I think, I think like that's, that's something key, at least for us. It's like you find people that are passionate about doing games. That's the key thing. And if you're, and I like, I mean, you need to be able to like, you need to spend some time to do stuff if you want to, if you want to show you want to work in it, you need to have like, in a good way to show it, like you have spent time on your spare time to do stuff. Like it could be concept art, models, 
coding stuff, small stuff, uh, whatever. It, I mean, like, peer, example, peer writing levels, whatever. It, I mean, that would be my my first step. And I, I would say that you know, if you're a student or if you're thinking about studying game development, or game art, game design, level design, something like that. We have had a bunch of interns at Fast Travel Games already, and you know, some some will most likely be here for the long run. So it's also a good way to show that you're skilled and passionate about making games and get a, the, the first foot into a company and get some contacts as well. A lot of uh, a lot of studies uh, involves you know doing internships at companies like such as us or or Fat Shark etc. So that's you know there's a bunch of good. Uh, uh, schools in Sweden or game development as well. So that could be one thing if you're very early in your thoughts about what to do uh, in the games industry. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree with the both of you. Yeah, it's like uh, all about passion. I mean, yeah, it's, you have to show what you can do, you know? We we want to see your your art, your coding and your your music and everything like Really, some the, the portfolios and and yes. everything, yeah. May make something yeah. that you can show to people. Yeah, that's really that important. is really much more worth than anything you can. Yeah, words, put in the words. Words that are not not worth much, you know. You have to show your passion with your work, with everything you do. But if you're a writer, then words. Yeah. Is <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nailed it. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so I think we're going to start wrapping it up here. If you have any last questions for our guests here today, please drop them in the Twitch chat and we'll try to answer those in the next couple minutes. Uh, I guess one last thing I want to ask you all is maybe we can go around here. Martin, if, if you want to start, for anyone who's watching the stream at home and they haven't played Vermintide 2, why should they play Vermintide 2? It's great fun. Perfect. Okay. It's good fun, and you, I think it's uh, yeah, it's uh, something you pick up. You can play a game over lunch, or maybe two games over lunch break. So uh, let's let's. All right, and it's twenty five percent off, made in Sweden Steam sale. So it's a very good chance to check it out. Yeah. Andreas, why should someone at home play Apex Construct? I think that. Apex Construct, you know, does everything that a VR game should do. It puts you in a fantastical world, a futuristic, yet believable Stockholm that you won't be able to visit anywhere else. And it lets you explore at your own pace or at your own peril. Um, you can pick up things and interact with the world, explore, find the hidden nooks and crannies. You also have amazing combat in the game. We were super proud of the way we made the bow and shield combination and the you know the different arrow types and all that. So it's it's basically the full the full VR game that I think a lot of gamers have been waiting for for a long time. Uh, the main story can last up to 10 hours depending on if you're the kind of player that wants to find everything. Uh, and with the new addition now of a Signa Cup challenge you also have content for the more competitive gamer. So I'd say that you know, if you can, uh, research the game, try it out. If you have a friend who owns it, uh, if you're on PlayStation, you can try the demo, digital download for free. Um, we are also looking into making a demo for PC potentially. So I, it's just a, it's a full package for VR, and it's also discounted you know, until tomorrow um, with 33 percent. Awesome. And finally, Kill Monday. Why should someone who hasn't played Frambo play Frambo? Oh, okay. So I think it's quite an interesting journey into the mind of a person. Uh, and it's also fun. <laughs> You're going to get some uh, dark humor there and a little bit quirky stuff also. And you're going to get a pet that is called Mr. Midnight. Look at him. He's just too cute. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of um, the entire the entire journey. It's it's I think it's beautiful to experience. And I got a lot of uh, from the fans that it was something to a lot of a lot of the fans 
think that it's a game that uh, after you play it, you can uh, relate to the characters a lot and it can give you something, it left you something that maybe you can um, think about mm -hmm. and how life is out there, you know, and in here also. And if you're feeling alone or <laughs> sad, it's a game that relates a lot to you as a, like a, an emotional level. Yeah, it's really emotional. So if you want to get an emotional trip, <laughs> there you got it. <laughs> yes. I Ooh. think that's it. Yeah. And it's a bit gory if you like blood and body parts, you know how so. <laughs> Excellent. I feel like you guys and, and Vermintide has that in common as well. <laughs> And there are bows in a fixed construct. I, there's a joke about Frambo and bows that I don't know what that joke is. But, yeah. There, there was one last question in the chat here as well, and this is for, for Kill Monday. Uh, was it a hard choice to change from creating a different galaxy to the current secret game? Probably the one you, you mentioned earlier that you won't be able to spoil today. Yes, well, different galaxy. We were um, creating different galaxy under one year. And uh, we realized that we wanted to change it to a 3D environment because it has a lot of uh, things that in 2D it will be like too much for me to do, you know, like I, I couldn't manage really. And I just honestly, I just gave up when it came to the, the art style and everything. It has grown yes. a lot bigger and we knew that we ourselves can't make it the way we want to make it. Exactly. So, Hopefully the new game, which we really love to make, will give us the funds to make different galaxies the way we want to make. Yeah, and it feels like, I mean, we have like this really in, uh, in the long term uh, plan. So there's a lot that is, is kind of come from us in, in the future. Yeah, we have a 10 year plan. <laughs> yes. Wow. So there's a lot we need to do, and uh, we really want to do it. But uh, yeah, it's the money. We're waiting for the money. The money, please. <laughs> yeah. so, so, folks at home, you know what to do. Give them the money by buying Frambo. It's seventy percent off on Steam. Yes, it out. yes, yes, buy it. <laughs> we get more and, cool games. Wait after the 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 the, the, re, the um, how you call it? the discount also. So if you want to buy the the game at full price. Support <laughs> your local Swedish devs. <laughs> All right, everyone, that, that's, uh, we're just about done with the stream, so, so I want to thank you all for joining. Uh, a big thank you to Steam as well for, for helping both feature this, this stream and also for helping us organize the Made in Sweden Steam sale. It's been really, really fun to have so many games in here, all from Sweden. So any, any last words from, from all of you here? Try VR. Try VR. If you can, yeah. it'll most likely be blown away. Take care, have fun, take care of each other, be kind. Yes, love each other. Yes. yes. Life is important to have it like nicely. Yes. Eat healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Eat healthy, y'all. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining us, Martin, Hi, thank you. Andreas, Isaac, and Natalia. It's been great to have you all on board and to talk about your games and what it's like to make stuff in Sweden. So one final question. How many of you are sitting by IKEA desks right now? We are. One, <laughs> two. Martin, are you at an IKEA desk? No, but it's, I don't think this is an IKEA one. I don't know. <laughs> we, we inherited this from the previous like, the company that had the... Uh, all right, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> cool, everybody. Thank you so much for joining, and I uh, hope we'll do this again Thanks, soon. Thanks, guys. Bye, bye. Yes. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Is it? I bet you heard that winter's cold, but is your summer too? It may be June in Sweden, but our sky is rarely blue. So when the clouds, they overpower, then what is there to do? We sit at our IKEA desks and game the whole night through. Hi!
Feel like I'm sitting on a mirror's edge Until I'm a goat munching leaves from a hedge I take shelter to be safe from the cold Or a steam world dig myself down into the coals This is a Swedish sale of our games And we offer them to you on a national day May your moose be blessed and your skies be gray So you can play these games in the Swedish way We like to write pop music in our bubbles While we're cruising Drown our meatballs and berries and sauces that you're not using But that's okay, we're really friendly and amusing At least once we stuck a shot of absolute bruising so boot up your computer and tell us of what you play and if you're nice we'll tell you what ikea directions say all right admittedly we're not sure ourselves but people love the furniture you know the stuff sells we've got abba and fika and spotify and h and m but what you don't know we got game devs for each of them indie games we're teaching them triple a we're reaping them but when your whole day is night dark don't mean you're sleeping then we the smelly fish and crack your steam wallet put snooze in your lip but be sure you don't swallow it press the power button your pc is Calling ya, link around here somewhere, be sure you follow it. Feel like a gunner when I lose my head, just cause two weeks on this game I spent. But I stick it to the man work, pay my rent, then I settle back in for my Titan quest. This is a Swedish sale of our games, and we offer them to you on our national day. May your moose be blessed and your skies be great, so you can play these games in the Swedish way.